Thank you for tuning in. My name is Nadine. I'm the Special Collections Librarian at the Newark Public Library. At this time, I would like to show you some of the highlights of our artist book collection. Uh, we have over 900 of these very unique and interesting works uh, within our holdings. Uh, this presentation is being created during the time of the coronavirus closures. So I am relying on images of some of the books. Of course, they have not been digitized fully. And I have images only of uh, selected works. In an ideal situation, I would have loved to have physical access to the book so that I could actually show you uh, how intricate some of them are, you know, how they open, what materials they're made of, but due to the situation, that's not possible. So I will show you some great items. Please stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this presentation. So what is an artist book? I will try to give you the simplest definition because institutions and organizations host symposia that last for hours that just discuss this particular topic. Um, simply, an artist book is made by an artist and it is intended as a work of art. It is often a unique piece, which is one of a kind, or it's produced in a limited edition. While it's a work of art in book form, many times they are not in traditional book form and they, they challenge what our definition is of a book. They can be Xeroxed, written by hand, printed on a letterpress, and usually they're self-published. You might be amazed to learn that some of the books in our collection take various forms and shapes. For example, some of them are in a snow globe. Some of them are inside of a musical instrument. They're printed on metal or produced on glass. Some are bound in a tin can. And one is even a paper mache rabbit. They can be sculptural. It is very difficult to pinpoint an exact definition due to the amount of creativity involved and the diversity of materials that are used. Artists utilize fabric, bottle caps, leaves, wire, fish scales, the possibilities are unlimited. Some are interactive like tunnel books and some are movable like pop-up books. Some are printed on sandpaper, metal, or on plastic and others are photocopied and stapled. And I'll show you some of these examples in a few minutes. I can also talk for a very long time about the history of the artist book. Again, I'll make this brief. The concept of an artist's book can be traced to France at the turn of the 20th century. During this time, artists created illustrated books. By the end of the 19th century, when the audience for posters and prints by painters began to grow, entrepreneurial publishers, some of these who are art dealers, began to commission artists to illustrate small editions of books. These um, publishers felt that if books were embellished by artists, this would increase the audience for their paintings. A little bit later on, between 1910 and 1917, uh, a group of futurists in Russia began creating books that challenge assumptions of traditional book production. And skipping forward to the 1950s and 1960s, Swiss-German artist Dieter Roth and American artist Ed Vouché created conceptual works which were considered to be the foundation of the book genre. Uh, in 1962, Vouché published uh, 26 gasoline stations, which comprised 26 photographs of gas stations along Route 66 from LA to Oklahoma City. Uh, this was published in unlimited editions and they were inexpensive to buy. So it really was an attempt to bring art to a wider audience. It provided art to people outside of the museum or a gallery setting, and it was a democratic art form. 
Artist books became popular throughout the 1960s and 1970s, and the genre has continued to expand. During the 1980s and 1990s, more artists began to use the book as a medium for self-expression, and they continue to do so. Techniques range from the traditional to experimental. Uh, some are printed on a letterpress, others are crafted by hand. Some are made using computer-generated images, and some even use Xerox machines to make them. Many artists have taken up the challenge to experiment with the content and the physical structure of the book form. And the works in our collection, for example, they range from miniature to oversized. They're not restricted to paper and ink and can incorporate all kinds of materials. And while many are unique, some are produced in multiple copies. So some of the works in our collection were created in addition of 100 or so, and then some are smaller editions like 25 or 30. So I'd like to show you some of the examples from our collection. Our collection has over 900 artist books. Um, this is a slightly larger edition. This work was made in an edition of 250. We own number 20. It comes in a white shoe box with a paper lining and it contains one right shoe. Uh, men's size 11 brown wingtip. Inside of the shoe is a rolled set of double-sided letterpress printed paper with original prose poetry on what appear to be dollar bills. These 31 bills contain the text of a poem on the slates by Clark Coolidge, written in black text on the front and then in green text on the back of each bill. As the roll of bills is so tight, once unfurled, the process of reading the poem um, is impeded by the pages curling back up, and so the text becomes fragmented over the separate leaves. Therefore, reading this poem becomes a physical and also an emotional experience adding to its meaning. And the Newark Public Library owns two of Coolidge's books. And as I go through some of the examples further on, you'll see that many of these become an interactive experience. And many were created based on an artist's childhood or experiences or just some sort of memory that has great meaning to these artists. And here we have a book that challenges the traditional book form. So it's formed out of polyester resin resembling the shape of a book and within it are encased fragments of books. So here you can see it's a green resin with pieces of paper in it. The artist was quoted as saying, just as color, form, and space can be manipulated on canvas and in sculpture, so it is with the written and spoken word. I communicate best visually because I see more than I hear. The artist studied with Willem de Kooning and she was a member of the Women Artists in Revolution, WAR. The WAR was a New York City-based collective of American women artists and activists that formed in 1969. They seceded from the male-dominated Art Workers Coalition, which was prompted by the Whitney Museum of American Arts 1969 Annual, which included only eight women out of the 143 artists that were featured. The Newark Hidden City Project is a 17-volume catalog of the works of Bish and Lasig. It presents a Newark mythology which augments and builds upon a vision of the hidden city already existing, focusing on the spirit and identity of the city's places and peoples. Lasik is the co-founder of the Sume Multidisciplinary Art Center and Bish is an architect and both work in Newark. This particular work was sponsored by the Algira Gallery. Here is a work called Chasing Paper. It contains over 300 paper samples, from small scraps to full sheets, of money, 
pre-20th century wallpaper, consumable packages, marbled paper, handmade paper, and labels. The artist is quoted as saying, this book, the third in a series using collections of paper, allows me the pleasure of revisiting, gathered bits and pieces, and forming this ever sprawling collection into a codex. This was produced in an edition of 30. Here is a wonderful pop-up book. It's a three-dimensional bound work featuring depictions of New Jersey by various artists. It's a shame that I can't open this up for you and you can see all the different scenes, but they are really great. So for example, there's a Take a Ride on the Lackawanna Railroad by Lynn Keffer. The Presby Iris Gardens, a free display of color by Dorothy Gannick. The Myth of Jimmy Hoffa by Chuck Miley. And the Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart here in Newark by Sam Ferlenza. Also included are New Jersey, Miles of Malls by Ellen Hess, and, oh, I live off exit 151 on the Garden State parking lot by Ronnie Pressman. This is the Linen Series by the Combat Paper Press. These are veterans who utilize uniforms that were worn in combat. They cut cook and be and form sheets of paper out of these uniforms. It's a transformative process to reclaim their uniform as art and to embrace their experiences as a soldier in war. One was, artist was quoted as saying that the uniform stands for destruction and chaos and death. And so to come back and take that symbol, that piece, to destroy it, to create something new out of it and make a positive thing from that uniform, it's got that feeling that you're moving on from that and stepping onto a new path. The paper here was made from linen and Egyptian cotton rag, military uniforms, and a pulped road atlas from their travels. It was printed using letterpress, monoprint, silk screen, and xerographic techniques. This work is a molded paper sculpture with a miniature book, and it's an edition of 20. It is a sculpture of the head of poet Sarah Carrig with Verkuta poems 1947-1954, featuring works that she wrote and kept in her head while in a concentration camp. Sarah was a government worker who discovered voting fraud by the communists in the 1947 election in Budapest. She was sent to a labor camp until 1954. While she was at the camp, she worked some of her time in the library and had access to brown paper. She composed poems, memorized them, and burnt them before the weekly searches, and then kept volumes of poetry in her memory until her release when she could record them again. The reader has a deja vu experience as they turn the page and encounter the same layout they just experienced of the title on the right and the two explanatory paragraphs on the left. However, this time, all the text is in Hungarian. Here is a whimsical artist book in the shape of a caterpillar, bound with string at one edge and with dancer's legs attached to the other edge with grommets. This joyful book gives vignettes of the narrator dancing through life. It just so happens to be a caterpillar. This was created in an edition of 25. This is the smallest book in our collection. It is contained within a Listerine pocket pack. And it's supposed to bring about the memory of these strange slips of paper breath mints and the loose pages of this book on which text is written are all about melting in the mouth. This work is the first in a series of an editioned globe book works from the artist's Waterworks of Art series. This seeks the true meaning of the text from the Pledge of Allegiance. The nature of the globe causes the viewer to concentrate on both the significance of the individual words or phrases and on also the visual beauty of the bending, twisting letter forms in space. Therefore, the words become floating, playful, original ideas whose interpretation 
like a Pandora's box, has the power to change lives. And here we have an artist book that's a ukulele. This is an illustrated timeline of the instrument from 1879 to the 1990s. The copy that the library owns is number eight, and 15 of these were produced. I wanted to learn a little more about the artists, and upon doing so, I learned that this particular series of works has deep meaning. The artist's grandfather owned a hotel, and one of his tenants was a merchant marine who played the ukulele. One day, he left without paying his rent, but he left a lot of stuff as collateral, including a Martin ukulele. It then passed down to the artist's father, who learned three chords, but always managed to play a tune and took it with his son whenever they went camping. The artist, several years later, was at a flea market and found a nice Hawaiian ukulele, uh, rather inexpensive, and his father and him would play together at gatherings, and this brought about a deep appreciation for the instrument, and he began carrying it wherever he went. And therefore, he got this idea to try to make a series of artist books out of ukuleles. Rocco Scary is an artist from New Jersey. Uh, he is a, an incredible paper maker, and he's spoken at the library before, and the library has uh, three of his works. Here is one that is it's really a sculpture of the American Insurance Building, which is located right next door to the library on Washington Street. This building is now owned by Rutgers University. It is made of handmade paper, steel, and digital images. It is a sculptural artist book, which is assembled in sections. So it is preserved within a box. Uh, you take out the bottom piece, it's a book with a, a steel rod attached to it, and then every subsequent book, which contains a landmark somewhere in Newark, and you can see how those books are sort of protruding out so that you could see some of the images. Uh, those have holes, so they slide onto the rod. Uh, then you insert the top sculptural piece of the building, and then the very top piece, that cap, that's another piece that's placed on top. And it's a three-dimensional representation of a building, and yet it's, it's an artist book. And that is also in our collection. This work is limited to 100 copies. It is illustrated with eight watercolor paintings of Cannery Row, which were painted by Th Donna Thomas at Cannery Row. The book itself has been canned inside of a shrimp can by Dave's Albacore of Santa Cruz using antique equipment, which might have been salvaged from Cannery Row. The packing inside of the can is Peter's shredded handmade paper, and the label on the outside was printed by the artists. In order to see the book, you actually have to open up the can with a can opener. And the metal, in case you're curious, it has been treated so that it will not rust or affect the archival qualities of the paper. This work was a response to the tax of 9-11 on the United States. The structure of the book symbolically reflects the two towers which are connected by a wall of images in the center accordion structure. The photographs were taken by the artists. The book was written, designed, and printed by the artists. The middle section of the work is in accordion fold format, and the book is hand sewn and it comes in a box. This was produced in an edition of 50. This is a portable Mayan altar. It was produced in Mexico. There are three volumes of spells which are stored inside of a fold-out altar. There is also a clay incense burner, two clay candle holders, and 12 candles. The texts are incantations by Mayan women, and 100 of these were made. Each book is illustrated with spirit paintings by contemporary Mayan artists. 
It is printed on handmade paper with gilt edges, and the books are bound in a black cloth over boards with black textile bookmarks. We have a very large variety of the many creative works made by Ed Hutchins, who had formed a relationship with Mr. William Dane. Mr. William Dane was the librarian who supervised the special collections department for decades. This miniature book was a gift from the artist. Uh, they're multicolor rubber stamped images on rice paper in a concertina binding. The book itself is encased in a colorful plastic guitar and this was issued in a limited edition of 30. Family is an accordion folded book which is housed in a wooden box with a front door which actually opens to a reveal a collection of household utensils used as portraits of individual family members. So for example, the hammer represents the father, the spatula is the mother, screwdriver represents the brother, and scissors are the sister. These four tools are overlaid on dictionary style definitions of each family member. The book suggests that the family unit has preconceived gender and sex roles for each family member, which serve as a tool of socialization and stereotype beyond the family. This was printed in an edition of 100. These are three artist books that are some of our more recent purchases, and they're made by artists in Cuba. The first on top is called Mareas, and it's a book made from Jayotaku prints. These are prints that are made when rice paper is pressed onto a fish that's covered with ink or paint. In this case, they're sardines that were caught by the artist and printed manually on paper. Mareas is intended to be a reflective exercise that explores the relationship of the hunter with his prey. If you look at the image on top on the left, it's hard to see, but even the case binding is created with fish scales. So translucent fish scales are glued onto the cover. And then there's fish netting used in the spine of the book. If you glance over to the right, you'll see the prints of the sardines, as well as use of selective netting throughout this artist book. The second book in the lower left-hand corner is called Ayi Fume, and this was made in 2017. It's an artist book consisting of pages, uh, take a look on the right there on the bottom, of larger cutouts that reveal more and more of a scene of laborers in a Cuban tobacco field. It's an edition of 10 and the library owns number one. The artist used to work in a tobacco field and this book reflects his experiences. And if you look, the tobacco leaves make up the cover of this book and it's really incredible. The third item in the center towards the right is a miniature book and the title of this one is Si sabes como me pongo pa que me invitan. And that basically translates to, if you know how bad I turn, why do you invite me? It's the statement of a typical unpleasant and unbearable drunkard who becomes a total stranger in front of his friends after having way too much beer at the bar. Uh, the artist who made this uh, keeps discarded materials in order to use them later on. It's unfortunate that in Cuba, one doesn't always have the ideal materials with which to create their artwork. However, on the other hand, it demonstrates how creative an artist can be. So to make this particular work, the artist did not have the necessary heavy cardboard he needed for the co cover of the book, or he couldn't even find a store that had it. So he had to make it himself. It was very labor intensive. He pasted pieces of thin cardboard and methyl cellulose as to make his own version of an industrial cardboard. While he was making it, he wasn't sure of how it would turn out or the quality of it, but overall he was happy with the result. So the whole book is made out of used materials which he recycled from his own work. 
And this is Crazy Quilt. It's an artist book consisting of 15 quotations and descriptions by women who have been institutionalized for insanity. It's an edition of 100 printed using silkscreen and letterpress, and it was created at the Women's Studio Workshop. These are square pages of richly colored patterns and text which unfold into one large quilt-like square, which is, you see here on the slide. The text resembles sewn handwriting from women such as Charlotte Perkins Gilman and Frances Farmer. And if you go on the Women's Studio Workshop website, and the link here is on the bottom, if you go to this particular page, there are additional images of this work. There's also an entire PDF of all the uh, quilt squares and additionally a video and if you watch the video you'll see how this book unfolds into this quilt. This is a book by an artist who worked in Newark, Jerry Gant. Uh, many of us are very familiar with his works and it is a book that was sewn together from jeans and camouflage pants by Jerry Gant, who was a local stencil artist. He touched many lives, and although he is no longer with us, his legacy lives on. Gant was a dear friend of the library, and I hope that when the library reopens, you'll have a chance to see the magnificent piece of his work that was installed in our James Brown African American room on the second floor of the main library. Even the reason why I selected this colorful background with butterflies for my slides is because in 2012, the library held an exhibit of Jerry's spray paint and stencils and the exhibit was called B-Boys and Butterflies. Uh, so we've got this work that's, you know, a book of pages made out of fabric. We also have a book that's made on a leather portfolio and we have several of Jerry's stencils in our collection. The artist's book collection at the Newark Public Library contains over 900 titles from the late 1950s to the present day, documenting an increasing movement in the artistic community, which combines literary, artistic, and social commentary, supplemented by innovative visual imagery and avant-garde design. We managed to catalog the entire collection so they can be found in the library's online catalog, which is just catalog.npl.org. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please feel free to send an email to specialcollections.npl.org. And for more information about the Special Collections Division, please visit our webpage at npl.org specialcollections. Thank you.